I feel like some funeral director ought to walk down front and say, all right, please, and roll out after that. Uh, it is a great privilege to be here today. Thank you to Georgia Power. Thank you to the Chamber. Thank you for to be in Jay Power uh, lunch and sponsorship. And it has been a long time. Uh, I'll, a third of my life has been devoted in the service of this city, and I've seen a lot of changes uh, in those 17 years so far. And a lot of it has been exciting. Some of it has been uh, tiring. Uh, there was a time when we were all stressed about what we were going to do, how we were going to meet the growth patterns. And now we've had a time to sit back and, and look and think and maybe uh, develop some different plans or segue into a different thought pattern. But I don't have the high-tech resources that the Mayor Hiram has, so I'm just going to go through some points that I made. Uh, the first thing, and by the way, she's so nervous, she's still shaking over there. She's had a rosary in one hand and a stress ball in the other, and, uh, but she did great. And she's done a great job since she took office. Uh, the most important thing to me in the city of Dallas, I think, is our continuity. Uh, I've been fortunate to be able to stand election and be elected five times. I hope that it represents people's confidence in my leadership. And the things that we've done could not have been accomplished without a great council. And uh, we've had a lot of continuity there. And we see we've had two new folks come on in the past year. I have with me today Jim Henson and Chris Carter are our two newest members of the council. If y'all will stand, please. And uh, is James Kelly here? I don't know if he may not. Nancy Arnold is the other council member that's present with us today. Griffin White is out of town and Mike Kaysen uh, couldn't get off from work. But they are a great team. They are very supportive. And I think the thing that makes this mayor and council work so well is that we can discuss issues, we can have differences of opinion, um, we can have different thought processes, but in the end when we make a decision we follow through with it. And I don't ever have to worry about a council member trying to upstage my position or the city manager's position or uh, try to step outside the box and uh, go off, go uh, differently from the course that the city's taken, and I appreciate that. I think it shows respect for the voters and respect for the city uh, itself that we can move forward in that fashion. Uh, we have a lot of employees in the city of Dallas who have been dedicated. Uh, Mike Wilkins just celebrated 25 years with the city of Dallas, and next month my right-hand man, Kendall Smith, my city manager, Kendall, if you'll stand up, We'll celebrate 25 years of service. I think that speaks well about the way we treat our employees. And as Doris said, it's a team in Dallas, too. And we value each person. A lot of times, you know, you hear about government employees. You saw this teacher strike in Chicago. And people get the wrong impression about public employees. But these are the men and women that get out and fix a busted sewer line or in the wintertime get in the ditch when the water line's broken and frozen. Uh, they have to deal with all of the, the problems that come up in the city and they are valuable to us and we try our best to treat them fairly and treat them right and I think it speaks in the amount of time that they have given to the city of Dallas and their loyalty. Big thing with government to me is service to our people. Uh, touch briefly on the fact that we had a major disaster in March. Uh, a lot of homes in the city of Dallas were damaged. Some of it was uh, precluded by the coverage of the school, but I think the thing that speaks most about our city is that within two weeks we had the mess cleaned up and hauled off. It cost us $80,000 that we hadn't budgeted for, but I think we owed it to our people and to the people of the county that came through here to see that we were going to move on and move forward. Uh, we had great response from community volunteers. My Mayor Pro Tem, James Kelly, and his church particularly came into the city and did a lot of good work. Uh, we had uh, Hugh and Nett Rose and Gray and Mary Nell Birch, who were older couples, World War II veterans, that uh, really didn't know how they were going to react and how they were going to get help. And they came in in two days, cleaned up their yards, and a lot more people, too. I see one of my neighbors up the street that was a beneficiary 
of that kindness and selflessness from those people. Another thing we've done is we've instituted a call system using calling post to help uh, eliminate some of the cutoffs and utilities. I know that everybody that deals with that knows what a hassle it is, both to go through it and then to turn things back on. So hopefully this calling system will reduce the number of cutoffs and it also gives us an ability to track those calls, to know when they were made and if they were received, if the numbers are good, and also to make them aware of other events that may be taking place or, or notices that they need to know. In the area of economic development, we were very proud to be a partner with Paulding County in the establishment of the Opportunity Zone. We already see the fruits of that state program uh, paying for itself and the creation of new businesses and the addition of jobs in the city of Dallas and in the unincorporated section of Paulding County where that Opportunity Zone has been established. We took a, a defunct development over on West Memorial Drive, the Industrial Building Authority in Paulding County purchased the land. The Sheriff's Department will use the back portion of it for a training facility, but the front portion has been turned into the West Dallas Industrial Park, and we already have our first tenant preparing to build a building and create a business there. It takes an old, defunct piece of property off of our books. It turns it into a tax-paying entity. And it also takes advantage of those opportunity monetized tax credits. The, um, and it's also related to the film industry. So it kind of ties together all the things that we've done in this, in this city and in this county. Like Doris, we've had movies filmed in the city of Dallas. We had a TV pilot filmed recently starring Nathan Lane using Main Street and the Dallas Theater. And we will continue to seek those opportunities as they uh, provide us additional recognition. And we hope that Georgia I will encourage our uh, state legislators to keep those tax credits in place. Other states are trying to become as competitive. And we have a huge investment in this county and the Atlanta Film Studios, as well as in the other opportunities and the businesses that are located here. And we must maintain our competitive edge in that area. We are in the process of beginning our third phase of our Livable, Cin Livable Centers Initiative program. You'll hear it, hear it referred to as LCI. Uh, this is the moniker for the Live, Work, and Play communities. You have seen the results of it on Main Street in the streetscape there. The second phase was the trailhead at the Civil War Memorial Trailhead Park. And the third phase will be a renovation of South Johnston Street and improvements to East Griffin, Spring, and Park Streets. Uh, all of this is designed to be prepared for the growth that we think will come in the future years. One time we were criticized for not reacting fast enough to growth in this county, and now a lot of people say, well, you're spending money, and what are you doing this for? Well, the LCI projects, the gateway signs that Hiram's doing, we have our own version of the gateway sign that will be uh, built in four places. All of that's designed to create the sense of community and to be an attraction to people to come. We've got a, a central downtown area. We need to enhance it. It's what draws people in. A recent statewide study showed that downtowns are the economic generators for the state, whether it's a small town or a big city. And you will see in the coming months in the General Assembly some action to provide some tax credits for downtown development and to ensure that Georgia keeps moving forward. We also have let the contract on the first phase of the sewer line extension to the airport. That provides the necessary infrastructure for development at the airport and the industrial park, but it also opens up the whole uh, western side of Dallas, the unincorporated part of Dallas, for future development both residential and commercial. So that is a big plus to us and it provides a necessary service. And we also have let the, uh, the contract for our new sewer treatment plant design. And if you've been through downtown lately, you've seen that we have a lot of streets torn up and a lot of things displaced. We are replacing water mains on Memorial and Confederate and, and other parts of town. And the gas company decided to come through about the same time or play, replace the gas main, so hopefully when this is finished, we'll be able to get back to normal. 
in our public works department for streets, roads, and sidewalks. We had the completion of the Dallas Connecting Sidewalk System to the Silver Comet Trail and the Civil War Memorial Trailhead Park. We are exploring the opportunity to build a pedestrian bridge over the railroad and connect downtown through the Elizabeth McCoon Memorial Park to Chattahoochee Tech and our retail center at the Highway 61 and uh, 278 intersections. That also connects to the Silver Comet Trail at another point at the trailhead at the chamber. We have plans for reconfiguring Confederate Avenue. Confederate Avenue is a state highway, 61 North. It is, one, it is our only historic district that's on a state highway system. It is where I live and others, and it is hard to get in and out, and the traffic uh, volume is uh, almost unba unbearable sometimes, and we have plans to narrow the street, to slow the traffic, to provide for greater pedestrian safety, and encourage people to be out on the sidewalks walking. Part of that is a connection between the end of the sidewalk presently at Cooper Place to the Atchison Park subdivision. We have used SPLOS money in some of our subdivisions that were uh, built, but not built to the specific uh, percentage that required uh, the sidewalks and things to be done. So we've gone back in at Atchison Park, Cooper Place, and other places and built those connecting sidewalk sections to give those homeowners a complete section within their subdivisions so that they can reach the city system and move about the city. We will be using some of that money. That's part of the other part that we were unprepared for was normally we'd build a, a subdivision or allow a developer to build a subdivision put in their base layer of pavement. When they got to 60 or 70% complete, they'd come back in and do the, the final top coat. Well, unfortunately, when the economic downturn happened, a lot of those uh, went bankrupt or left, and the streets were never finished, and it is a problem for us, for Hiram, for Paulding County, and for every other local government uh, in Metro Atlanta particularly and we'll be using some funds. We've got a proposed plan over the next three years to uh, resurface those streets or to provide the final surface of those streets. In parks and recreation, uh, if you have ridden through downtown Dallas on the south end, you will see the new Elizabeth McCoon Memorial Park. Uh, it is a beautiful facility. It will serve as a gateway into Dallas. It's at the intersection of uh, Henry Holland Drive and Hardy Street, and it will be the connector, hopefully, for the pedestrian pathway through the Oasis Church parking lot to uh, Chattahoochee Technical College. We also received a T grant, Transportation Enhancement Grant, for the construction of the trail in the Dallas Battlefield Park. This will be the first segment of a part of a trail to get people up to the uh, trench area and uh, to be able to access the historic area of that park and eventually it will connect to Sarah Babb Park uh, through the property that we purchased two years ago. We have a master plan that's been developed for Sarah Babb Park. Um, we took that park from the county years ago and we've continued to make enhancements and improvements and now we have a master plan that uh, shows us some capabilities that we have there to make it even more useful to our citizens. We partnered uh, with a local student, Jeb Gordon. His mama Renee is in the back of the room today. I've known Jeb since he was a baby, and now he's at Georgia studying landscape architecture. And so I had the idea one day, I said, Jeb, can you work on some park plans? He said, I need to build my portfolio. So we're using Jeb to come up with concept plans for Coleman Camp Park, which has been basically unused for the entire time that it has been in existence. And he's got some great ideas and it's going to be a central part of our historic district development. I think it's going to be an attraction for families. It includes a, a dog park area and attractions, uh, fitness uh, attractions as well. So uh, we're very excited about the opportunity not only to provide additional park services to our individuals, but to be able to give a young man from our county the opportunity uh, to exercise his abilities and to use that as a platform uh, for his education. 
And then finally in Parks and uh, Recreation in uh, May, we had the dedication by the Sons of Confederate Veterans of their monument in the Civil War uh, Trailhead Park, Civil War Memorial Trailhead Park. And it has been an excellent addition there. This time next year, we should have the Civil War trail marker that has been funded and is being prepared for that location. And all of that is to draw on our historical tourism. That's one of the big things that we have in this county is our natural areas and our historic treasures. And so that adds to the lure for those people that are coming for those things. On quality of life, we are establishing a vacant and foreclosed property registry and we've instructed our marshal to enforce it vigorously. Uh, we are enforcing our nuisance ordinances. There have been a couple of old homes that have been left to basically fall in that have been torn down the last couple of weeks. And there are more on the list. It is being used to clean up blighted areas. I don't think my lawyer would let me call them by name, but I think if you ride down West Memorial Drive, you'd see one on your left and out on the right as you go out the street. But they're either going to clean them up or get rid of them. We're not going to tolerate uh, the things that happen on those properties and landlords that let their properties go like that. It's a detriment to everybody in the city. We passed the International Property Maintenance Code, which helps us to enforce the neighborhood uh, protections. Those of you that live in subdivisions where homes have either been foreclosed or taken over by HUD and left to stand, that gives us the enforcement capability to go in and require at least that they be maintained. And if not, then we can do so in place of lean against the property. Our Historic Preservation Commission is establishing a residential historic district to complement the business district that was done a couple of years ago. This is not the national registry, but it is a, an attempt to preserve the heritage that we have and to make sure that development that comes at a later date will follow the scheme and the aesthetic that it currently exists and to make Dallas a cohesive environment and it follows those uh, guidelines. We passed a motorized cart ordinance to be able to drive golf cart, carts and things around through Dallas on certain streets. We think that will cut down the number of cars, but also in, increase some of the intra-neighborhood uh, association, and it will be able to get people to the retail centers without having to use their vehicles. We've worked with the county for the historic Paulding County Courthouse to be used rather than remaining vacant and mothballed. The uh, Genealogy Society has located there. The Paulding Fine Arts Society is located there. And Georgia Highlands College has put a library in there. So what it'll do is it'll open the building. It'll be a center of attraction for both students, for our tourists, and for those that are uh, interested in the arts community. And if you have not been to the art gallery, it's the whole courtroom floor. It's technically the third floor of the courthouse. But if you uh, have a time from Thursday to Saturdays, it's open, I think, 10 to 4. We have a lot of talented local artists. They're both displaying and selling their works, and they're also teaching classes. So if you got, think you've got some talent, you have the opportunity to explore that as well. And finally, our police department is um, engaging in more aggressive enforcement of drug and traffic ordinances. Uh, we feel like that's a vital step for the quality of life. We are at full manpower there. We, too, instituted a take-home policy for our police cars to have them in the neighborhoods and to be seen, uh, to increase the response time, and to allow people to know that they have a presence in the community. Finally, I'll end with the challenges we face. Everybody knows that Harry Truman uh, popularized the slogan, the buck stops here, and he put it on his desk in the Oval Office. I don't think any president since then has really taken it seriously. And it seems to have become a boomerang. We are the most intimate form of government that exists. We are closest to the people. And as such, a lot of times we tend to be on the bottom of the totem pole. So every time they talk about cuts in Washington or changes or whatever, it's like uh, Mitt Romney said last night, it's trickle-down government. They're not cutting a lot of the money they're spending. They're just forcing somebody else to pay for it. And it comes down to the local level. 
uh, my main topic always ends with saying, leave us alone. <laughs> I believe firmly in home rule for local governments, that cities, counties, and school boards. Each one of those local governments is elected by the people in that area. They develop their method of revenue raising. They develop their spending habits. They develop their form of government from their people. And we don't need people in Atlanta and Washington trying to micromanage 535 cities, 181 school districts, and 159 counties in the state of Georgia. I was at a conference last week. I sit on the board of the, the health system for the cities. It's amazing what this new national health plan will do to our plans. Every business in this room will be affected. Every consumer in this room will be affected. There's, a new, there's an organization called GASB. If you're in government, you've heard of GASB, the Governmental Accounting Standards Board. It's not a government entity. It is a group of accountants. But the government allows them to control the reporting mechanisms for all the local governments. But you know what? They hadn't changed the rules in about six years, and they decided they need to change them again. And it's fixing to affect every government in this country. And the biggest thing it's going to do is, rather than looking at pension liabilities and our financial health over a, an actuarial period and a smooth period of time, it's going to take a one-time snapshot. And I guarantee you, when those reports start coming out, there's going to be panic because people are going to think things are much worse than they ever were. There are accountants looking at things one way and the actuaries are looking another. But again, they have no governmental authority other than we've allowed them to do so. And that's going to change the way we do a lot of our business and our reporting. It's going to cost local governments a lot of money. Another thing that was put off because they thought, well, it might be the wrong time to implement is changing street signs. Every local government in this country is going to be required to have a uniform street sign. Uniform font, uniform height, uniform length, and a certain standardized color. Think how many street signs you pass every day. And you know who's going to pay for it? The local folks. Uh, that's some of the federal stuff, some of the state stuff. You know, uh, I think the... Uh, the Congress has issues, but we also have a legislature that a lot of them talk about believing in free markets, capitalism, business expansion, let business operate in a free market. But they continue to interfere and meddle by, pay, by placing artificial limits and caps on revenue, by changing codes, by trying to uh, guys something as a tax cut when actually it's just a tax or a fee shift. The um, meddling with the tax structure. Uh, Georgia has been competitive for the last 30 years because it had a diverse tax structure. It concentrated on providing a good education system and a good transportation system and providing for natural resources. And now we've done away with that. We think we need to be competitive by being like everybody around us. Well, we once were the leaders, and we need to be the leaders again. We need to provide those quality of life issues that bring businesses to this state. Finally, we have some local challenges, and I think things can and should and will work out well. I'm very willing and uh, open to, dis to discussion on these items. We're in the middle of our local option sales tax renegotiation. This is one of the pennies you pay in local sales tax. This divided among the county and the municipalities. There's a new system in place that takes eight criteria to decide how that's divided. And uh, we want to make sure that people are treated fairly. But I also want to always ensure that there's tax equity 
for the people that live within the municipal boundaries of the cities of Dallas and Hiram and every municipal government in the state of Georgia. That is the only form of government that is growing. People are adding cities in this state because it's closer to the people, it's a more intimate form of government, and it's more responsive to their needs. We also will be talking about service delivery. This is a rule that was instituted about 15 years ago that requires the cities and the county to work out agreements on how services are delivered in the area. And hopefully that will go smoothly and with little contention. I sum this up by saying that, that government is a challenge. It's a challenge in these days particularly. We have seen a shrinking tax base. We have seen property values decline. We've seen budgets decline. But the needs haven't changed. My budget now is about where it was in 2007. But I have about 12,000 residents where I had about 7,000 at that time. We have more road miles, we have higher gas prices. All of those things have to be factored in. And we've about cut as much as we can without cutting into the services that we provide. I thank you for your uh, attention. I thank the people of Dallas for their confidence in me. I strive every day to earn it. I love Dallas. Uh, no other place I'd rather be, except on Saturdays in Athens. But, uh, <laughs> and we are 5-0. and o, So thank you very much for your time. <laughs> God bless you and God bless America.